Welcome to Midlife Matters. I'm Marie, and each week I'm joined by my friends Julie and Mindy to talk about all the topics keeping women in the middle years up at night. Summer's almost here, and it's time to talk about how to make it a success. Who do we want to connect with? What do we hope to accomplish? How do we want to feel at the end? Join us as we share our ideas for how to make the most of this special season. Let's get started. Listeners, today we're talking about how to have a successful summer. And for this episode, we're using Laura Tremaine's 10 Questions for a Successful Summer. Laura is the host of the popular 10 Things to Tell You podcast, and she was a recent guest of ours in episode 130, where we discussed the keys to a great friendship. So if you guys have not listened to episode 130, you'll definitely want to go back and listen to that. Julie, you brought these questions to Mindy and me. What about them appealed to you? Where did you see them? I guess I just saw them on her Instagram account. I just like her style or kind of her purpose for Instagramming and for her podcast. Um, so I don't, I don't feel like we're stealing her idea. She puts it out there and says, I put these questions out there for you to talk with your friends, with other women, with your family. And she said, if you don't get to do that, at least run them through your own head. You know, like it's just always good to think think about things, think through things, have a plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I thought these would be good questions um, because this summer is just different in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I don't, you feel like every summer is different for some reason. Like Mm -hmm. it seems like every summer that comes around, I'm like, oh, well, there's this, this summer that wasn't in the past. And, you know, last summer was of course different for everyone, but I think even this summer has its quirks and next summer will too. Right. Every time I think we've hit some sort of normalcy, like I, I just no, like it's new. Every every season is new and right. exciting. But I love that Julie um, brought these questions to us because she's right. Like as, when you think about it, um, you have to be more intentional, and um, it it's nice instead of feeling like I'm always playing catch up to maybe get ahead and feel like I'm being intentional. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when it said a successful summer, that sounds a lot like work to me. You, know, you think of success associated with work, but I guess um, maybe we could think of it about just being more intentional about summer. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. want to work too hard. Right, <laughs> That's right. Right. Yes, because the very first question is a hard one for, I don't know if it's Enneagram ones or just whatever kind of person I am, but what mm. defines success for this summer? And so I have to try and find an actual definition. But Julie, (laughs) you tell me how I can tone that down. (laughs) Well, I think it's good that we're talking about this because I know for me, I just hate to get to the end of the something, to the end of something and then think, oh, wow, that didn't look like I wanted it to, you know? Mm, So mm -hmm. let's think about how we want it, I guess, with an end in mind and I guess I've just been thinking about my purpose this summer and it feels really different than any other summer of my life. It's not so much about accomplishments or goals or where we're going. Um, For me, I just want to spend good quality time with John, help him and cheer him on. That's what he really wants and needs. If you'd asked me this question two months ago, I might have said, I just want to survive the summer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But there's been some tweaks in John's treatment and it's really caused a big turnaround for the better. Mm -hmm. And so I see a lot of potential for us getting to do some things that we hope to do that a few months ago, we really didn't think were possible. So I'm just, you know, holding on to those plans loosely, like we've talked about before, but I don't know. I just want to, it's about quality time with Mm -hmm. him this summer. So, Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. That's such good news, Julie. I love hearing that. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And Mindy, you're starting out the summer in a brand new house and your family looks different because you just had your daughter's wedding. I mean, what is a successful summer in your situation? Wow. I can pretty much narrow it down to three, three items. Um, Making sure all members of my family are adjusted Mm -hmm. and wherever they are in whatever season they're in, Um, making new relationships as well as continuing to um, pour into our I'll call them old relationships Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) and then settling my new home. And so Marie, my list is probably easier because like if you had my list, you could say, okay, there's this goal, this goal, this goal that I will meet. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes, I would like that. <laughs> so um, honestly, I think that just um, success to me would look like ending the summer, not having a million projects to do in the house, but being able to rest at night and sit on the couch to read a book. Mm-hmm. Having friends that we regularly see in person around LaGrange and um, knowing that all of my children are thriving. <laughs> so mm-hmm. that's a tall order. <laughs> that is it a tall is. order. <laughs> you know, set the standard high. Right, right. Well, <laughs> by the end of the summer, you'll go into a grocery store and you'll see somebody you know, and then you'll feel that you recognize and knows you and you'll feel yes. more at home. Yes. Do you know, Julie, that last week, my first week in LaGrange, we go out for the first time to lunch. Somebody calls me by name and I'm like, what? Who is this? <laughs> I turn around. It's Bryce's boss. Oh, like, oh, wow. And then we go and hop into this new coffee shop that just opened. So you hear my love language. They just opened me a new coffee shop downtown. Yeah. And we see our neighbor. Our sweet little neighbor girl, 15 years old, who had brought cupcakes to our door the night before. Mm. And so this is just a precious little town. And Jacob commented to me, he was with me both times, and he said, is that how it's going to be here? Mm -hmm. Like, people just know you everywhere? And I'm like, apparently so. So the Lord has been sweet to give us those things Mm -hmm. already. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's awesome. And you're going to survive without a Starbucks, right? I mean, there is a Starbucks, but I'm oh, okay. so happy because um, we've been in transition for a while. I'm actually so completely thrilled to have my own coffee maker back mm. that I am relishing drinking my own coffee on my back porch. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will not be running to Starbucks anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see. What defines success for me this summer? Um, I mean, this, this is such a low bar. I don't lose my temper as often as I usually do. (laughs) You guys, I'm just going to get honest. Like we've had a week of summer and I am already exhausted. People never go to bed. They never go to bed. It was like Mm. almost 1130 last night. One of my daughters is then deciding to join the cross country team and they (gasps) are going to wake up at six the next morning. And like, we've just already been up since I've already been up since six in the morning, you know, And they're never going to bed. And so I say, well, if you're going to get up at six tomorrow, get ready for bed, you know, now. And, you know, like a couple more times of saying that, I did say, all right, you lost your phone. Give me your phone. You're not getting it back. If you don't get in bed in the next five minutes, you're not even going. And she goes, whoa, what are you getting all mad for? Okay. I didn't start out mad. (laughs) I started out just asking you to go to bed a reasonable (laughs) hour since you're waking up in like five and a half or six and a half hours. Is it too much to ask that we could shut the house down? You oh made my. me mad. I know. No, Marie right. needs like a safe room. You need a safe room I that's did. incommunicado, like no <laughs> communication, no radar after a certain time. But I don't think our kids hear us until we're yelling sometimes. And I'm like, I told you the same thing an hour and a half ago when I was still calm and nice. Yes. I said, moms do not start out mad. Like they make memes about this. So it's obviously not just my house. Like we don't just start out screaming. We move to screaming when people completely ignore our nice requests. That's right. And there are, there are um, times in between that go between the calm and the screaming things that you say, like trigger words, like look me in the face. So I know you're listening. (laughs) Put that down so I can see your face. Like, right. pay attention. And then you get the eye roll with that. I know. <laughs> so it's just, it's impossible. I like I, I like to go to bed feeling like the day was a success. And oh. when my nights end every single night with just absolute exhaustion and begging people to go to bed and like, it's just, it's not successful. <laughs> okay, so I just signed up my youngest son for a week long camp. Oh, and I'm wondering, do you have any camps coming up in your household? <laughs> I do. Well, it's not a camp, but my um, parents are taking Lydia and Lauren uh, for like 10 days because they're driving to Colorado and back. 
So they're nice. going to have a great time. And it's not any one person, but it's the dynamic. And so the dynamic will be different for 10 days. And and I do not want to make it sound like we're not having fun or doing fun things. We are, but I thrive on routine and all routine is out the window in the summer. Like Julie <laughs> came in my house yesterday and Julie, I, was every square inch of the countertop covered with something? Because people have just vomited all their school stuff everywhere, <laughs> graduation stuff everywhere. You know, like there's just no anything cleaned up. I don't feel like I can get a handle on anything. So I don't know. I have a really low bar for success. (laughs) (laughs) You and I have swapped places. (laughs) Survive not feeling like I lost my temper too many times. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) So anyways, but let's move on to Laura's second question, which is what can I do this summer that I couldn't do last summer? And Julie, I mean, there's probably a lot of things that you plan on doing this summer or want to do that you couldn't do last year. Yeah, there's just so much I certainly won't take for granted this year. Like Very normal, small things feel really special right now. Like Mm. I went to church and somebody hugged me. I thought, gosh, I think it's been a year since I've had a hug, you know, Mm. from a, from Mm -hmm. a outsider. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, We can go to church without a mask. I can sing without a mask. Um, We can have people over inside our house and, you know, meet inside for book club now, Um, go to baseball games, go to plays and movies and concerts. And um, I'm just ready to get back to all of that kind of stuff. I don't have my big calendar planned out, you know, like I did the year before. Yeah. But I'm, you know, I'm ready to start looking for those things as we're up for it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Definitely a lot more choices of things to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's this new venue here in Nashville and it's, um, it's a concert venue in a quarry and it almost looks like Red Rocks in Colorado. Really? What's it called? (laughs) Yeah. Where you saw Lauren Daigle at. Um, I, you know, I think it has something to do Corey or something. Mm. I'm not sure, but it's beautiful. So I looked up the lineup and the only person I even knew, cause I'm sure they were mostly country artists. <laughs> uh, um, Harry Connick Jr. Was playing there. Oh, I, thought, I can oh, see you I liking that. To him. Yeah. yeah. Oh yes. So. All um, right. I have to check that out. Yes. Well, Mindy, what are you going to do this summer that you could not do last year? All right. Well, I'll start out fun. I can get to the beach girls in four hours. Woo! I'm I jealous. can get to the Florida um, Gulf Coast in four hours. And I'm super excited about that. Yes. <laughs> but the other thing that I'm really excited about is um, we can put down roots. Mm-hmm. We can start we can start the root system here in LaGrange. Um, last summer, we didn't know where we were going to be. We were, you know, heading into a temporary lifestyle. We had no idea where the Lord would lead us. And so um, I've talked with the boys and Bryce about, you know, as we meet people, you don't have to wonder how long you're going to know them. You're mm-hmm. going to know them for a while. So so let's take our time. Let's, let's build these relationships. Let's even take our time putting the house together. I'm not going to rush to do it. I want to enjoy the process. Um, I'm enjoying knowing that, um, the things that I do are going to last a little longer than a year. So mm-hmm. that brings a true peace and joy that is indescribable. Mm-hmm. That feels good. I'm sure. And we, yeah, we've had a lot of, we've had a lot of transition and this has just been such a, um, a wonderful season to, to begin walking in now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for you. I'm so happy to hear that. When I looked at what can I do this summer that I couldn't do last summer, I mean, I just don't know if I'm that get out there and do 8 million things type person. Like, I remember when the 4th of July fireworks got canceled. (laughs) So, you know, I mean, we could do some of the things that we normally would do. But I would say that I did most of the things that I would normally do last summer. We still went on vacation. We still got together with family and close friends. I will say that you can meet new people this summer. I didn't feel like you could meet Mm -hmm. anybody new last summer. You know, you pretty much stuck with your older, closer friends or um, family members. You didn't feel like you could, like, how would you invite a new person over? You felt like, how would they feel about that or whatever? So I do feel like that would be good. I also am looking forward that you can get together in larger groups and Mm -hmm. more people are comfortable with that. And um, Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so I'm looking forward to those things. 
this summer as far as things that I didn't do last summer. Mm -hmm. And then maybe just some of the things that we did take for granted, like we took for granted that our local park would have 4th of July and they canceled it. Or I know they have a concert series that is fun to go to and they canceled all that. Like just things that we have come to kind of have a rhythm for in the summer and then they weren't going on. Even the community pool that we usually join was closed all last summer and this summer it's open so we can swim, you know. Yay. And even if you don't go, it's just nice to know it's happening. Right. Right. You know? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about our relationship to screens, because I know last summer we talked a lot about COVID and, you know, I I could barely tear myself away from my screen just, you know, Mm. trying to figure out what in the world was going on with the world. But this summer, I'm not just constantly perusing that kind of thing, but I do know that I need to have some boundaries. Like I have a friend who listens to this podcast and she posted the other day, this is my last picture before I sign off from social media for the summer. And I thought, oh, that's so awesome. Like, (laughs) I don't, I don't know if it's that I don't not have that willpower because if I wanted to do it, I would. But I admire the fact that she sets a boundary. She wants to do it and she just does it. And I think all of us can look at, well, where do we want our boundaries to be this summer as far as screens? Mm. Mm hmm. (laughs) <laughs> well, if I want my screen time to go down, I'm going to have to give up Facebook Marketplace. Oh, oh are you no. still buying a ton, Julie? No, but I just am enjoying putting in very specific searches and just waiting to see if it comes up. And I'm selling a lot. So <gasps> okay, um, wow. I have a lot of stuff up that didn't sell and I just keep renewing it. And it's amazing. Like two months later, somebody's finally interested. So don't give up if you're having uh-huh. uh, trouble selling something. Good just advice. Like, the right person. So that's where a lot of my screen time comes from. I've kind of minimized other social media formats. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we're probably watching more TV than we used to with John, mm-hmm. you know, being sick. So, um, which I'm, I'm fine with that, but yeah, I want to be on my phone less. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, and you kind of have a setup where you can watch TV on your porch or, you know, mm-hmm. you can feel like it's more than just, just watching TV, maybe it's experiencing some fresh air at the same time or, you know. um, Yeah, I want my screen time to be my screen porch time. Yeah. There you go. (laughs) (sighs) And in your swing bed. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, what do you have for screens, Mindy? I'd say that segues perfectly into uh, my screen time is mainly been shopping lately because it is a smaller town and there are things like a front porch swing that I'm shopping for light fixtures. Um, I can't easily just like go into town to go to stores. Mm. And so, um, and so it's probably good that I limit that because when I'm on screen time, I'm spending money. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's dangerous. I mean, some of those things are helpful, but there's gotta be a limit, you know, like I need to kind of set a limit for myself. You know, you can buy these things and then get off. Right. But um, the other screen time I'm thinking is for my boys, my teenage boys who love to game. And um, I enjoy that they can online game with their brother, Grant, who's still in Tennessee with, you know, like one of them has a best friend back in Pennsylvania. They can still talk. And but like we have warm weather now. We have a beautiful yard. We have a lake. We have activities that they can do now that I want them to have balance. And so as a mom, I'm looking at, well, how can I allow them to have keep these relationships up online and have this gaming opportunity, but also like to see the light of day and have a break. So currently trying to figure out that balance for them. Mm -hmm. So my youngest are 17 this year. And I mean, I've just given up all all even thinking about screen time. Like it's almost a relief that I don't even have anyone young enough to worry about. Like your boys, you they're still young enough where you can set some boundaries. And I guess I could set some boundaries, but I mean, they're go- they're going to be seniors. Like if you mm-hmm. don't have any personal mm-hmm. boundaries by now, like I do notice that at this age, they do start to set some goals and boundaries for themselves, you know, and that is the goal. But it's like a relief to me. I don't sit around and think, uh, I wonder how long they've been on their phone or wonder how many TV shows they've watched today. Like, one, I don't think that they've, you know, maybe watched as much TV, at least on the actual TV. 
that I would be worried about it. But two, I've kind of just put them in charge of that kind of stuff now. Well, you know, Marie, you could talk to them about having their screen time late at night when you go to bed so they can get all their things done during the day while you're awake. You can happily go to sleep. You're like, I don't care what you do on your phone. I'm going to bed. Right. <laughs> I know. But it's just like with teenagers at late at night. That's when they want to, you know, do things and talk and like sign up mm-hmm. for cross country and, you know. <laughs> That's right. Everybody signs up for cross country the night before at eleven thirty at night and emails the coach. (laughs) Oh my gosh! So you know that's the time they thought of to do it. (laughs) So, so anyways, um, but that kind of goes into what Laura asked next, which was, "What will I watch or read?" I was thinking about this because. A couple summers ago, it was the summer of parenthood in our house where we watched Mm -hmm. like all the parenthoods with my youngest because I'd already watched them with the older kids. Mm -hmm. And that was really fun. And now it seems like this summer is turning into rewatching all the seasons of the middle because Mm -hmm. you guys, we have them all on DVD, but I don't know about your house, but like our DVD players up in our bonus room, which is Mm -hmm. kind of at the an in, inconvenient area that's not where we're really gathered so we don't really watch dvds but i found out a week or so ago that hbo max which is an app that you can put on your uh, roku is right. streaming all the middles and we get hbo with our i don't know oh. tv package or whatever yeah. like you can't not get it they charge you either way and so Yes, it's been wonderful because it's just like a Netflix where it just goes right into the next one. It keeps track of where you are. And we, the other night, we sat down and watched like seven in a row. Yeah. The kids and I, but they're only 21 minutes long. And I can't remember the last time we had time to just sit and watch TV as long as we wanted. But summertime is the time when you do get some nights like that. And that's it's so awesome. fun to have a quick show like that, you know, something yeah. that's you're not investing an hour and a half in or whatever for yes. one show and and you just know it's good and you're going to laugh. I'm going to have to. Get yes, on that definitely. <laughs> because even the girls, they'll say like, oh, do you want to eat lunch and watch a middle? Like, it's just mm-hmm. the perfect amount of time to sit down mm-hmm. in the middle of the day. And yeah. we've all seen them. And so the jokes are like family jokes, yep. you know, it's just so yeah. funny. Yeah. Well, it, it's ironic, Marie, that is a picture of success. To me, to be able to have a show and you can binge watch with your with your teenagers. That is successful. Yes, I felt successful the other night because I didn't mind staying up late to watch the middle because that was so fun. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are you guys watching this summer? It's funny because John has, I think he's purchased these seasons on Amazon. I'm not sure, but he's into Everybody Loves Raymond, which once oh, again, we've seen every those. episode. Oh, but we've we've been watching them in order from the beginning. And it's mm-hmm. just, it truly is. It's a wonderful funny, funny TV. Show. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, there's just so much truth and in reality in it Mm -hmm. so that's been fun to have that like we just know we have that every night um he's watched all the harry potter movies okay twice yes Yes. so i joined him for part of those and but that's about all we have like i like tried and true things i don't necessarily want to look for a new show so i just tend to fall back on the old things but Mm -hmm. i am excited about the olympics I know oh, y'all are. Are the Olympics coming on this I summer? I didn't know they were coming. <laughs> well, you know, they were supposed to be last year. And oh, so I did not even know they got canceled, I, Julie. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, Teachers, and they could get, I'm not even sure if it's a sure thing. Oh, this year. Okay. they're in Japan and it okay. starts July 23rd. So okay. I'll be watching for two oh, weeks. Okay. Two weeks. All right. <laughs> You fill us in. I mean, the only thing I would be interested in watching is the gymnastics, probably. Yeah. But only when they get to like the final rounds. That's true. (laughs) Yeah, because that's a summer thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. What are you going to be watching, Mindy? All right. Well, I am excited to watch. I've seen some new Disney movies coming out and they're streaming over Disney Plus. Like you can you can pay for it over Mm. Disney Plus to watch their new movies um, because there's a couple of new Marvel movies coming out. We're super excited about. But also there's a movie theater in here in town and it's it's open again. And so I actually want to go to the theater here in my new town and check that out. Oh, okay. Is there any summer movie coming out that you are looking forward to in particular? 
Well, anything that's new, I'm looking forward to. That's okay. Right. <laughs> it does not so, matter. <laughs> I'm like, it doesn't really matter. Um, the two that I have heard about are Loki. Uh, there's like a, a movie about Loki. And then there's a movie about Black Widow. Okay. Yes, I saw this. And um, they're doing a Jungle Cruise movie for Disney fans that kind of follows the path of Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, because that's a ride in Disney World. And it's got yes. uh, Dwayne Johnson, who I think is funny. We love him. Yeah. So I'll probably want to see that. It'll probably be ridiculously <laughs> silly. Um, yeah. That sounds ridiculous. I didn't even know about that. But um, yeah, anything like that we're excited about. But also our tried and true show that we have talked about watching again is Monk, which we love. Oh, that's another love. great show. Mm -hmm. I know there's all these good, good shows. Um, as for reading, somebody told me the other day, I don't know how I missed this, but one of my favorite movies is Crazy Rich Asians. And mm -hmm. I, there is, there's a book series on it mm -hmm. and I did know that and so uh, have you guys read that i read the book um i tried to read the ones that came after but i didn't like them as well but the but the book i read the book before the movie ever came out and it was great yeah i think i may have listened to it so if you don't want to read it even if you listen to it while you were walking or something it's good good to know so i'm that's on my list it's my short list of one book <laughs> my goal at the end of the summer is to be reading crazy rich asians on my couch <laughs> okay yes well, I know I don't have any specific book that I'm looking to read. Um, I mean, I have different books on hold. I got like four books that came up this week. They were all duds. Like, I don't know. They probably were one's recommendations that I had picked up here or there, but they just didn't huh. really appeal to me. Like I started them and I was like, eh. So I don't have anything really that I'm dying to read this summer, but I know I'll need to find something. Julie, do you have anything? Uh, nothing I'm dying to read, but I am going to try to read the James Harriet books, the All okay. Creatures Great and Small, just because yes. I'm loving the show. And I feel like <clears throat> those are books I should have read. Right. Um, so I'm going to give those a shot. Yes. And listeners, if you are looking for reading um, things that we actually have enjoyed, Julie and a friend and me, we all did an episode just last week on books. So if you are looking for some things mm -hmm. to read this summer, go back and check that out. But what can I try that's new? That's another one of Laura's questions. What can I try that's new? And I'm so excited, you guys, because my new thing this summer is that we adopted a dog. Oh, Yay. my goodness. I cannot <laughs> believe that. When I saw that, Marie, I about fell out of my chair. You've got to tell us about this. <laughs> well, so a few week, a few episodes ago, um, one of I think it was in our Discover Something New episode, um, we had to answer the question, what have you been afraid to do, but you would like to do? And I said that I'd been afraid to adopt a dog. So I had been looking, but after that episode, we came across a dog on a rescue organization's website, and I've always liked Weimariners. I think they're really pretty, and they have a very mm -hmm. short coat, and so I didn't think they would shed a lot. And it said Weimariner Mix, and I thought, oh, well, I'm interested in this dog already. And I let her go about two weeks on the website because it said that she could jump a four foot fence. And I thought, well, I don't think that I'm going to be able to have her then because I don't even have a fence. But she just wouldn't leave my mind. Like I just kept coming back to her in my mind mm -hmm. and in the choices. So I finally asked about her and the foster mom said that she's very calm and gentle and she thought she would be fine living in a house without a fence. So I thought, oh, and then she also thought she'd be fine living in a house with cats, which that was another one of my caveats was we have a cat and I didn't know how a Weimariner would do with a cat. But right. she, you guys, she's only been here five days, but we love her. We love her. <laughs> we named her Clara. That was like the only name we all could agree. I mean, Julie Aww. knows that I had this poll going around everywhere with like 10 names. Lauren was doing a tally of all the votes. And then we picked something that wasn't even on the list because nobody could <gasps> agree. Anything. Say, that wasn't even on the list <laughs> no. that I got to vote on. It wasn't oh, even but on I do like list. it. I do like mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So we named her Clara. And she's just so sweet. One of the things about Weimariners is they call them Velcro dogs. And my dad said there's nothing worse than just a dog that you're just taking care of. You want it to love you. Mm. And mm -hmm. in the foster mom's description, it said that her name was Fauna. Fauna loves her human. And then she put in all caps a lot. 
And that is yeah. how she is. She follows me around everywhere. And I love it because she just wants to be near me. <laughs> so that that's so lovely. Fun, especially after. I met her last night. Yes. She was very sweet. And when I came to the door, she came right up to me. She didn't bolt and knock me down or, oh. or bark or. Wow. <laughs> Unlike my dog. So it was a very pleasant experience. Yes. Oh, that's so sweet. And Marie, you got this dog before Isaac left. You were just I saying know. Isaac was teasing you about how you were going to get it after he left for college. I know. <laughs> it gives me so much joy. It really does. I'm going to totally make fun of you forever and a day about it. But the the sweet girl that I mentioned that brought us cupcakes, her name's Chloe. Uh-huh. She's 15 and she's a little adult. I found out that Miss Chloe is a dog trainer. Oh. Yo, I'm like, the Lord sent us to a neighborhood where my neighbor is a dog trainer. So if we get to the point, because my boys are begging for a dog, um, if we get to the point, I can hire Chloe. <laughs> yes, because I was going to say, in addition to just adopting a dog, one of my new things this summer is going to be taking dog obedience classes. And I would have never pictured myself in a dog obedience class. I'm Mm -hmm. looking forward to it, though. I'm so excited to take my dog to dog obedience classes. (laughs) So sweet. I hope she gets an A. I know. I can't believe it either. Who is this person? I know. I know. So that's my summer. I think our our whole family is enjoying dog ownership because, Mm. um, well, we're only five days in, but Steve took Lauren out running on a trail and he's like, oh, I've always wanted a dog I could run with and you should see her. She runs and runs. She was pulling us along. So she loved doing that. He was so thrilled that she liked to run. Um, So anyways, it was just fun. Our our last five days have been fun. (laughs) Wow. That is like baffling to me. (laughs) A cat and a dog in my lifetime. I'm amazed. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but what do you guys have new this summer? Well, Marie, one of my things was I think that we should take our dogs on walks together. I think that would be fun, <laughs> Julie. <laughs> we are dog walking friends now. Yeah. <laughs> well, we we might be. We'll see how it goes. Um, <laughs> I will just say that Julie's dog has a reputation of just literally laying down in the middle of the road and not moving anymore. <laughs> yeah. So I'll have to post a picture of that because... <gasps> Yeah, she, he used to just sit and resist. Now he just lays over and that, in the middle of the road. So but I, funny. <laughs> I found if we go to the park, he does okay. okay. There's something about our neighborhood. I don't know what it is. Positive peer pressure at the park. I like guess. More, more people are watching. Yeah, it would be embarrassing for me too. So I'm glad he feels that way. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we need to, we need to do that. Yeah. Um, And then um, now that John is able to eat, you know, he hasn't really eaten well in two years. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to try some ethnic foods and eat our way around the world here in Nashville. Yes. Um, Because there's so many good places that have opened up since 2019. So um, I want to try that. I want to hike more. I want to picnic at the park. We I hiked with a friend the other night and we stayed through sunset. And oh, my gosh, it was the most beautiful sunset and then coming up on the other side of the sky was the moon, like sunset oh, wow. and the moon at the same mm. time. It was just gorgeous. And there was this couple having a picnic there. Mm. And I thought, oh, I need I to do that. I want to do that. Yeah, that's not hard. <laughs> wow. So there's just so many great spots I've found to hike here right in Nashville. And mm-hmm. uh, so I just want to take advantage of all of that outdoorsy stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, well, now that I own hiking boots and a dog. We need to hike. <laughs> yes. Have you been to Smith Park? Uh, right I've been here? to Smith Park just to walk myself. But yeah, no, not like to walk with my dog. Yeah. Well, there's Whole some new great trails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, one other thing that I have said that I wanted to do for like the past 15 years was go to the drive-in movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I remember I was so upset because in 2020, they I thought, oh, we could go to the drive-in since they closed all the theaters and they closed the drive-in too. I have no idea why, (laughs) but you know, I hadn't been in 20 years, so I shouldn't have been too upset, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. That just sounds like a fun thing to do. Yeah, it does sound fun. Well, Mindy, what are you going to be doing new this summer? I mean, really anything you do in a new town is new. It's Mm -hmm. all new, but I have to say like my house, I love my new home. And so um, we have an outdoor kitchen 
and um, there's a green egg in our outdoor kitchen. Awesome. And Bryce and I have never had a green egg. <laughs> so honestly, everything I want to do, I I just want to be at my house. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm so happy to be home and I'm so happy to be in my house. But something funny is um, we went to church for the first time this past Sunday and we met so many wonderful people. And one of the main questions from all the ladies were, so do you play tennis? Oh. I was like, I think I'm going to start because... <laughs> Um, that seems to be the, um, activity around here. There's this huge, beautiful tennis complex and, um, Bryce and I were out at the park last night. Some guy was giving tennis lessons and I thought, you know, I think that's going to be me. I think I'm going to go mm-hmm. take some tennis lessons. So, and then Julie mentioned a uh, picnic at the park and we actually just did that this past weekend. We are exploring our surrounding areas. There's a lot of lakes. Um, there's a lot of parks. And I have come full circle back to my childhood because the parks that we are visiting now are parks that I grew up going to. And mm. so that is wild. I don't actually yeah. um, usually get the experience of being nostalgic, but um, we went to this park called Flat Rock Park this past weekend with the boys and I had packed a picnic lunch, which I don't know how many years it has been since I've done that. It's so simple. Why don't I mm-hmm. do that? But um we had our, our speaker, like our external speaker that we set up on our picnic table and we had our softball gloves and we um, took the football and we just played oh, that's and awesome. it was the best yeah. day ever. And then we came home, which is where we all want to be also. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's really good. Hey, I will say um, we have a green egg and I just used it um, this weekend for the first time in a year. And there's a learning curve with those. Read up on it before you use it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Bryce is sending me YouTube videos and like start small and like there's all this stuff. And so we are like, we realize, okay, we had this pack of ribs that we were going to try. He was like, we put it back in the freezer. Yeah. Buy some cheap meat. <laughs> yes. That's what that's what everyone recommended online was to start small and kind of get used to it. And so we're going to be figuring this green egg business out. Yeah, because it's totally different than a, a, a yeah. gas grill. So, yeah, but it's, it's good. It just takes some time to learn it. OK, good to yeah. know. Yeah. Well, if you make anything wonderful, share it with us, Mindy. Send us a picture of your creations. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> All right. Well, what can we repeat that worked last summer? I loved last summer that there were a lot of last minute plans. And I'm hoping mm. that this summer there can be last minute plans. I'm just not a big planner. It's hard for me to think, what do I want to do two weeks from now? And I loved last summer that you could just get an idea and everyone was free. Nobody was busy. Mm, yeah. And so that I hope that people's schedules are still more open this summer, more freedom. And there can be, you know, maybe you only have to give people a few days notice and not like three weeks notice, you know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Do you have anything that you want to repeat that you did last summer, Julie? Are you like, I never want to see anything about summer of 2020 again? (laughs) Well, no, I... I can be content at home too. That's kind of what I learned. Like we certainly had lots of practice in 2020. And now that it's over, there were parts of it that I learned to be comfortable with. And I loved my evening walks. I love listening to audiobooks and podcasts on mm-hmm. my sunset walk. So I'm going to hike. I'm going to walk. Keep doing that. And that really all started, you know, last year with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and just want to get together with friends, cultivate friendships kind of in simple ways. Like you said, Brie, just more spontaneous, like, hey, come sit around our fire pit. Or mm-hmm. I still like takeout food from nicer restaurants. I hope that mm-hmm. sticks around. Mm-hmm. Uh, just It just seemed like there was less fuss about things, you know? Mm-hmm. Things were just right. simplified. And I think my comfy joggers worked pretty well. So I think I'm going <laughs> to. Yes. I think that worked. So I'm going to put that on repeat. So. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to be giving up their comfy clothes this year. <laughs> nope, currently sitting here in my joggers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mindy, what are you going to repeat from last summer? Ironically, the way that I kind of thought about this was um, something that has made an impression on me is I was doing the laundry this morning. And I thought, gosh, I remember when Abby and Grant were younger and they were at home. And the summertime was the time where I was like, oh, you have time to do your laundry. 
you know, you have time to learn how to iron. Mm. You have time, you know, so like I, I don't mind washing things, but that we would all come to the living room and I would throw their clothes at them and try to hit them in the head like it was fun. Mm-hmm. But they would have to fold their own clothes. Like, you know, there were just things like that, um, kind of chores around the house that I don't mind doing, but I actually feel like, oh, wait, Jacob and Nathan need to learn these skills. Like mm-hmm. Abby and Grant are gone. Mm-hmm. And um, I need to not forget to teach Jacob and Nathan how to cook certain things and do their laundry, iron their clothes. And the other thing is just saying yes more. Mm-hmm. Saying yes to um, if somebody invites you somewhere or a new activity or, or whatever. Um, you know, with things being so simple and if you get an invite, we're saying yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Is there anyone that you guys want to connect or reconnect with this summer? I imagine there's going to be quite a bit of reconnecting since people haven't seen each other as much. Julie, do you mm-hmm. have a list of people? Well, I do want to start visiting my daughter more, like uh, my grandson was born September 2019, so I visited a lot before the lockdowns. Mm-hmm. And my goal was to go out every three or four, three months and keep him for a week and just help her out and spend time with him. And then when COVID hit, all that just went away. Mm-hmm. And so, and now with John's diagnosis, I just don't know. I can't make solid plans, but that is a goal to try to get out there more, either mm-hmm. by myself or or both of us. So that's definitely something that had to be put on hold last summer. Mm -hmm. And then I just hope to reconnect with some people at church, like not necessarily even close friends, but those people that are just, I don't know, you just notice that you miss them from your life. And one thing I liked that Laura Tremaine said, I think she said this when she was a guest on our podcast, that reconnection doesn't have to be dramatic. Like you don't have to offer this long explanation for why we lost touch. Mm. Like, just keep it simple, you know, mm-hmm. like, hey, I've missed you. Can you get together next week? Mm, right. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be real dramatic. And sometimes I feel like it does. Like, I, I, like I owe them an explanation, like where I've been mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. or why I haven't called. But uh, I like the way she said, just kind of gently put the ball in their court and see what happens. You mm-hmm. know? Mm. Oh, that's good advice for sure. Yeah. Mindy, who do you want to connect with this summer? Definitely reconnecting with a lot of family this summer. Uh, We're taking a trip to Kansas for a wedding, and we're going to just see a lot of people we haven't seen in years. Um, And we get to go by my parents' house in Missouri. And then I actually, um, living in LaGrange, I live about 45 minutes from a lot of cousins and aunts and my grandparents. And so um, we've never had this opportunity to live so close. And Mm. I look forward to seeing family members we haven't seen in a long time. And then I'm also um, completely thrilled about connecting with new friends. Um, We've met just some wonderful people here already, and I can't wait to get to know them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think connecting and reconnecting is some of the things that will be going on this summer, but it also feels a little awkward and maybe scary. So if you're listening, know that you know, we all feel the same way too. You know, it's not like we all just jump back into it. But I think there are, like Julie said, just those people that you, you know, if it was a close family member that lived in town, you probably kept in touch for the last year. But if it was anybody that lived out of town or friends that you didn't see on a regular basis, all of those relationships kind of, what did they, what did they call that? Like slow fade or whatever, like that thing where it's just kind (laughs) of... All of them just sort of experienced that. Um, Yeah, they just kind of drop off. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. And it wasn't anything that any person decided or or set out to do. It just sort of happened. And so I do think that this summer hopefully will be a time that a lot of people kind of take stock and reach out to people that they haven't seen in a while. Well, Mm -hmm. how do we want to feel at the end? We're almost at the end of this episode, and how are we going to want to feel at the end of summer? I know that I want to feel successful or like I was intentional, especially because I am sending off someone to college in August, and it feels Mm. very short. Here we are in the beginning of June, so I really only have June, July, and then he leaves the first week of August. 
And I want to send him off with good memories and connected time together and fun that we had. And I want it to be a good summer. I always think of Mindy. She's always like, I want to finish well. And that's how Mm -hmm. I feel about this summer. Like when you have somebody going off to college, there's a layer of pressure almost because Mm -hmm. you do want it to be a good experience. So that's one of the things. That's one of the ways that I want to feel at the end of the summer. How about you guys? Yeah, for me, I I just want no regrets. Like I want to be content with how we spent it and not, you know, I want to spend time with John. I want that to be a good time. And that's mostly about my perception and my attitude and less about what we actually do or where Mm. we actually go. Mm -hmm. Um, John wants and needs to plan. So I can't, Mm. I don't want to take that away from him, but I kind of get, pretty engrossed in those plans Mm -hmm, (laughs) and I can be easily disappointed if they don't happen. So I just want to hold on loosely to those plans. And, you know, if we get to do some, that's great. If we have to miss some, that's okay too. That, that doesn't mean it wasn't successful. Um, And I also, you know, I love all the seasons, so I I don't want to get to the end of the summer and feel like, oh, I missed it. I kind of want to be ready to move on to the next too. Like, Mm -hmm. okay, summer was great. Now I'm looking for fall, looking forward to fall. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard in Tennessee because our fall in quotes starts in (laughs) August because that's when the kids go back to school, but it's like still one of the hottest months. So it doesn't feel like fall. (laughs) Yeah. That's more like October. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) And that'll be my November. (laughs) Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, how are you looking to feel Mindy? Uh, well, if if I could just say um, in one word, I want to end summer. I want to feel grateful. I want to feel thankful. Moving into our new home, um, getting Abby and Joey married, um, I have been overjoyed, overwhelmed with joy. I There's not even words to describe how I have felt the past week and a half, and um, my journal is so full. I'm trying to just capture everything that I am just completely overwhelmed and thankful for. Um, The past few years have been hard and um, I'm trying to grasp and take in. I feel like the Lord has just poured out his blessing on us right now during this time. And it's not that life won't get hard and things won't happen. It's just that um, we're in a season of blessing and of abundant joy. And I want to not let the cares of the world come in at some point this summer and you know, get obsessed with fixing the house or obsessed with something else. I want to continue to see the, the, um, things that I have to be grateful and thankful for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a good attitude. I definitely want to end the summer feeling like I've actually relaxed. I mean, the lazy days of summer is a expression for a reason. I want (laughs) to have some lazy days. Like, you know, I think that that's what we all long for in the summer is just to feel like we've relaxed. We've enjoyed our family. We've enjoyed our friends. We've enjoyed our food. We've enjoyed Mm -hmm. whatever activity we got to do. But I definitely feel like we want that refresh. We want to feel like that at the end. Um, And I know we've done summer episodes before and listeners are probably thinking, you guys do not work. It's very hard to feel refreshed. And so I'll have to put a link in the show notes to our episode where we did try to think of ideas for people that work. And one of our ideas Mm -hmm. was just to try and make summer a little bit different. Julie, I think you had suggested in just the clothing that you wore and maybe the routine that you had and something different that you did after work. Yes, the food. like. But we all want to feel like there is something different and something Mm -hmm. a little bit special about summer. We never outgrow that. Mm -hmm. Julie will always be a summer kid at heart. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I do love summer. I love them all, though. I mean, I really do love all the seasons. And you're right. Like we talked about at the beginning, summer really does change when you don't have kids at home. It doesn't feel quite the same. So you have to look for new ways to make it feel like summer, Mm -hmm. you know, because you don't have the same schedule. You don't, I mean, my life hasn't changed that much from, well, mine has, but I mean, typically from March to June, it's, I'm doing Mm -hmm. the same thing, you know? Right. Right. So you have to look for ways to make it, to make it different and special. Yeah. Well, do you feel like even without kids in the home though, that, 
I feel like for me, the changing of the season to summer would always mean that I had permission to relax more. (laughs) Oh, yeah, it does seem different. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like you have permission to not do what you usually do. Yeah, but you just don't have that. um, I don't know, like going and doing like I don't go to the pool or the water park or the, you know, Mm. like those things were just natural because of kids wanted to do it. Now I, I have to. I get to do what I want, but I have to make myself go out and do it too, Mm. you know? Right, right. Well, that's definitely good advice. I think we all have to make ourselves relax, make ourselves do something, make ourselves make it different. So hopefully Uh the things that we've talked about today will help us. Hopefully we look back on what we've talked about and think that we did them. And hopefully it makes listeners think about what they can do to have a successful summer. We do not have time for I'm a fan today, but hopefully we'll all be a fan of summer. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) Sounds great. (laughs) All right, you guys. We'll talk to you next week. All right, girls. Bye. Bye. We're so happy you joined us today. You can find the show notes for this episode at midlifematterspodcast.com. Also, please tell a friend about the show and help them hit the free subscribe button on their favorite podcast app. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at midlifematterspodcast. That's where we post pictures and stories about all the things we talk about in each episode. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.